<laughs> Hello, everybody. It's me again. And me. <laughs> um, it is one o'clock, and we are going to proceed with the group exercise using SSI data. So we're going to give you about 10 minutes or so to work together with the people at your table uh, to go through the scenario and answer the questions. And we'll check back with in with you and if you have any questions let us know there's a few people um, from the SSI team who are available and then in about 10 minutes we'll check in and start seeing how you guys are doing with answering your questions all right I know that you guys aren't quite finished but in the interest of time we're gonna get started with answering the questions so just to make it easier, we'll just kind of go from table to table, question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. Okay, so question one. Um, your hospital follows COLA and Billy procedures in your monthly reporting plan. What procedures are you required to enter in NHSM? B? That's correct. Um, and that's because NHSN only requires you to enter procedures that are included in your monthly reporting plan. And these rationale will be up when we put all the slides up. So I know you're taking pictures and stuff, but they'll be available to you um, uh, when we get all the slides up after the um, conference is over. Uh, question two, what does trauma equal in this scenario? Correct. And that's because there was a blunt force injury that occurred prior to the procedure and the procedure was the reason, or the tr injury was the reason for performing the procedure. Question three, what does emergency equal in this scenario? Correct. And just as a caveat, I kind of left out a key piece of information that you do need to know. So I know Vicki talked about this, you select yes if emergency is defined by your protocol. So in this scenario, our facility uses that E designation and the ASA score to designate an emergency procedure. So that's the reason for this particular procedure that this is an emergency. Um, question four, how is the procedure duration reported for each of the NHSN operative procedures? Okay, I heard a couple of different answers. Um, the correct answer is C. And this is found in denominator reporting instruction number four. If you have more than one NHSN operative procedure through the same incision, you're going to use the entire duration time for each procedure. Uh, question five, and this is based on the second part of the scenario. Um, the wound class for that second procedure was reported as clean contaminated. Based on the operative procedure details, the IP thinks that a higher wound class should be entered in NHSN. What wound class should the IP enter? Correct. Good. All right. So question six. Um, is this procedure primarily closed for that second procedure? You guys are good. Mm -hmm. Vicki, you did a good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if any portion of the skin incisions closed, then we call it a primary closure. Uh, on question seven, what criteria would be most appropriate to apply? You are right. So we have organisms identified from the organ space level. And you would look at IAB because it's from the general intra-abdominal space. And for those of you who went further to identify which IAB criterion was met, it is 3A because you have that organism identified from non-purulent fluid and you have at least two of the qualifying symptoms. Okay, question eight. You guys are really good. I'm getting through this pretty fast. Um, which procedure is SSI attributed to? A? A? All right, good job. And that's because, as you know, it's kind of hard to tell which procedure is really attributable to the procedure, so we're going to refer you to 
table four and your colo is your highest risk procedure. And what would you assign PATOS as? Good job. All right, in question 10, which hospital will report the SSI to NHSN and what designation would be selected in the detected field? Oh my gosh, these guys are really good. <laughs> I need to pick harder questions next year. Um, okay, you guys are right. You, it's the facility that performed the procedure that's going to report it, report the SSI. And we just asked that, you know, we were talking about that geek good communication between the facilities before. If you receive a patient and you think they meet SSI criteria, that you uh, transfer this information back to the IP at the other facilities so they can report the SSI if they need to. Okay, question 11. The IP notes that the index operative procedure was performed in December of 2018 and the SSI occurred in January of 2019. Which SSI surveillance pro protocol should the IP use? One more time. All right. They listened to you too, Rebecca. <laughs> and as Rebecca told you, that's because the procedure is what carries the risk. So that's where we're going to put our numerator in is with that procedure date. And now, now for Rebecca's questions. And I have very few. So uh, based on the case that we just went through, what is the procedure to event days in the above uh, case scenario? Well, sorry, the answer is already there. Honor system, who actually? <laughs> All right, so again, counting the procedure date as, um, as day one, the number of days between the procedure day and the event day is 17. Okay, now I just not realized that I did not apply animation to my slides. So the answers are all on the slides. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask the questions and I know that it's in your, uh, your resource manual and you can tell me the qu uh, question, the answer before I, I, I uh, move on to the next slide. Which of the missing denominator details listed below will result in the exclusion of the procedure from the SSI SIR. So there is A, wound class, B, height, C, weight, D, ASA score, E, procedure duration, F, diabetes, G is all of the above, regardless of whether it is used in the risk adjustment of the SIR denominator, or H, any of the above, if it is used in the risk adjustment of the SIR denominator. Awesome, H. All right, next question. <laughs> um, okay, so the rationale, let me put that here so you guys, if you want to take a picture of it. As Jennifer said, this will be published with the um, final slide, so you have access to it there. But um, procedures with missing data are excluded from the SSI SIR if the missing data is used in the risk adjustment of the SIR denominator. However, with that said, you still should make it a conscious effort to report or enter complete procedures. You know, that way you know um, that you have all that information in your line list when you run it. Otherwise, it will still remain in your incomplete alerts unless you have addressed it, okay? <coughs> oh. All right, the next question, which SSISI report will the first COLA procedure and SSI be included in. So the uh, the first response category is adult all SSI data, B pediatric uh, all SSI data, the C is adult complex AR, and then D pediatric complex AR, E complex 30 days SSI data, F is A and E, G is none of the above, H is all of the above. I gave you so many options, just, you know. So is it, okay. We're good. Awesome. All right. And the rationale, as you all know, it's an adult 
procedure. And because the event was detected um, at a different facility other than when where the procedure was originally performed, it will not be included in the complex AR, which then leaves the adult in complex 30 day, the CMS report. All right, so the fourth question is, which analysis report can you use to gather details on this patient's color procedure in a table form? Line listing, frequency table, line listing, procedure excluded from SSI, SIR, search the database, bar or pie chart. Okay, it's A, and please pardon what you're about to see. The sign is on the wrong one. It's A, it's not frequency, it is A, that's correct. The line listing of all procedures contains all procedures and their corresponding detail. Um, the line listing of procedures excluded from the SSI SIR is a subset of the all SSI procedures um, that meet the universal exclusion criteria. So the answer is A. Okay. Okay. Which analysis report can you use to gather details on the SSI event resulting from the patient's color procedure? And it's A. Um, and the rational is also line listing gives you the, uh, the details of the report. Okay. Which analysis report, next question, can you use to gather the uh, account to, uh, to get a summary of the number of procedures that are performed in a summary time period? You can. That's not the next no, no, it's not. It's a, it's a question I'm asking to go. <laughs> 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 because the answer is already on that. No, I want to know what, what report can you use to count, to get a count of your procedures? Okay, great. <laughs> Wanted to confuse you a little bit there. Um, all right, so the sixth question, are trauma equals yes, colos excluded from the complex 30-day SSI, SIR calculation used in the CMS report? Yes or no? Okay, that's correct, it's no. All right, that is the end of the analysis question, except there was a bonus question that <laughs> um, in the notes that you didn't have to go through, but I am curious, did anybody, oh, great, just that one table? All right, I have taken notice of that table and I'll go visit that table in a little bit. Um, so that is the end of the questions. I did include the um, answers on here. Um, and if you guys do need access to it, we can, uh, this is gonna be printed, I mean, with the published slide. So you have the answers to the bonus questions available to you, okay? All right, so I'm guessing nobody took this path. No? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, we are out of time. So if you have questions or, you know, want to go over something, we can talk about that uh, at a break time. Thank you.